Hi everyone, welcome back to History Jacksonville. I'm George Farrar and today I'm going to talk with you about drive-ins of yesteryear in Jacksonville. Growing up in Jacksonville in the late 70s, early 1980s, I came to know drive-in movie theaters and I was really intrigued by them. Unfortunately, I became intrigued by them when I would see them, but they weren't that much longer for this world. They were torn down, ultimately. This is the Midway Theater, drive-in theater, that was on Beach Boulevard, near Southside, long ago. Uh, I saw, and I know I went to this drive-in movie theater and saw a movie as a kid. And at night, you would see the Midway sign lit up. Uh, and I wish I had a really good picture of it to show you. Uh, Beach Boulevard back in the late 70s, early 80s was, to me, a really cool place because there are all these different places. There was a, uh, a miniature golf course. There was this drive-in movie theater. Uh, so, uh, as a kid, it was a really cool time. It was a drive-in movie theaters were kind of a relaxing place to, to get in your car and go see a movie. Uh, here we see uh, a movie listing uh, with uh, different movies that you could see at the Fox Drive-In and what we just saw the Midway Drive-In. And you'll see a Fox Drive-In sign for the Fox Drive-In that was uh, on Normandy right near I-295. Uh, Fox Drive-In. You'll see a sign in just a moment. I thought this sign was pretty cool. The drive-in movie theaters that I knew, I was really intrigued by their signs back years ago. Uh, also, I, I my first memory of uh, watching a movie uh, from the car in a drive-in theater was actually at the University in Phillips drive-in theater. I don't have any pictures from that, uh, but I do remember um, seen a movie with my father and my stepmother and it was a real cool time so uh and so fox drive-in presents their first annual bikini night okay so this looks like this is from the 1980s uh and it's kind of interesting if you take a look on here you see towards the um or portion of the promo different names of different um businesses uh Turtle, Turtles Record and Tapes, Pizza Inn, Western World. So different different stores that I remember, different places I remember from the West Side. Now, back, now this, I didn't take this picture, but I can remember going out to Jacksonville Beach and taking a look at the old drive-in theater, the rear of the drive-in theater screen, uh, Jacksonville Beach drive-in theater that... Um, Ultimately, it ended up becoming a trailer park, but I remember one day driving out uh, and seeing uh, it looked somewhat like that uh, when I went out, and it was kind of an interesting drive because I was driving all over the place. Now, this is a picture courtesy of the uh, Jacksonville Historical Society website of uh, the Normandy Twin drive-in theater, and here you kind of see the architecture, kind of what a drive-in theater uh, would look like you have we can you, you stop to pay your admission and you go park the concession stands are in the rear and you would just sit there and just watch the movie uh, now we're going to transition over to talking about the playtime drive-in now i <laughs> i saw a double feature at the playtime drive-in now don't worry about it don't worry about it, it was um in 1991 back when uh they did the changeover but at one point Back years ago, the Playtime Drive-In was an X-rated drive-in theater, okay? And they had a flea market, too. Uh, they started out as a Twin Hills Drive-In in 1948, and they were around for 60 years. And somewhere around the 60s, they 
the 70s to transition into showing pornography. But hey, I did um, get a chance though, in my last experience at the Playtime Drive-In, being able to uh, uh, see, uh, I watched of all movies, Home Alone and Flight of the Intruder in 1991. I think it was right around in the early 1990s I visited. But later on uh, in the 21st century, uh, it burned down. So, and the, they, the, building, the buildings burned down and it had, uh, it had um, gone out of business. Now I'd like to talk with you about where History Jacksonville goes from here. Back on June 7th, 2012, I uploaded my first episode of the History Jacksonville series onto the Legacy channel on YouTube. And later on, I created the Jack's Life channel. And I had initially expected to do six months of History Jacksonville shows. And here I am in season eight in 2020. And as you can see here from a picture I took from Confederate Park, looking towards the Wells Fargo and Bank of America towers and the JEA headquarters and the church there. Uh, the, I had envisioned at one point the goal of History Jacksonville being to educate, enlighten, and entertain our community as a nonprofit collective effort. And I think I've accomplished a lot in being able to provide you with a lot of shows about my hometown of Jacksonville. Now, I moved to El Cajon, California in 2019, so it's now time to begin to wrap up History Jacksonville as a regular series. It will remain as a on occasion special that I'll broadcast on this channel. But for History Jacksonville for now, we're going to have three more shows. I'm going to talk about some interesting places in one episode. I'm going to talk about filmmaking and how I've put together these shows over the years. And then I'm going to say goodbye with a grand finale episode, which will broadcast by May, by the end of May 2020. I've got a lot to bring you. Uh, in the future on the Jack's Life channel, our year-by-year -year series will be continuing. I want to encourage you to please watch. There'll be more History Jacksonville specials. They just won't be in a regular series format. And I want to thank you uh, for watching over the years. And I want you to ask you to, I do want to ask you to let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. See you later.